Hey guys, welcome back to Hammer's Home Video. Um, have another haul today. I got all those from last time watched, and I decided to take a trip to uh, Disc Replay in Columbus, which is where I went with uh, the Physical Media Man um, several months ago now. Um, decided to go back and check it out, see what they had. I had kind of forgotten how their pricing worked. I intended to get Blu-rays, and then I realized, oh yeah, the Blu-rays didn't have the buy three, get three deal. So, ended up buying um, mostly, DV well, all DVDs. Um, but I found some cool stuff, I think. Um, like the past couple, we'll count them down from lowest to highest, based on letterboxed reviews. Got a couple... Letterbox rating, sorry. Got a couple uh, Christmas movies. Uh, you know I'm a sucker for the Christmas movies. And uh, that's where we're starting here. This is a very low rated movie. With a kind of cool cast, I guess. Depending what you like. But um, has Patrick Stewart, John Heater, Cheryl Hines... Um, Max Casella. Christmas Eve. This is only rated 2 on Letterboxd and had some pretty mean reviews. Well, the one I saw was pretty mean. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I just can't imagine not sort of liking something with Patrick Stewart, but I don't know. I guess we'll see maybe this Christmas. This one is one that I actually thought I remember hearing it was good, and um, I was a little shocked when I saw the uh, letterbox rating. Diana, 2.3. This was actually still, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's factory sealed still. Um, Naomi Watts as Princess Diana. Thought I heard it was good. Thought I heard her performance was good. Uh, according to Letterboxd, not so much on both counts, but uh, let me know what you thought of it if you watched it. Um, I remember that night... When, uh, you know, the paparazzi and, uh, well, you know, the, the night that Diana died, um, well, I guess it was the next morning before we knew, but, well, our time anyway. Um, that was a weird night. Like, I remember hearing about it, and I was kind of thinking about it when I went to bed, and then I woke up and heard that we heard she had passed, and I don't know. I mean, I've never been that, uh... The whole royal thing is never, um, is not something I pay a lot of attention to, but it was certainly unfortunate, uh, what happened to Princess Diana, so. Uh, 2.3, I don't know, I guess this is not so much about her when she was famous or when she was the princess, uh, I think it focuses on a previous relationship, so, I don't know, let me know what you think if you've seen it, um, I don't really know what to expect with that one. Um, this one is another one I thought was rated higher. Um, I thought people enjoyed this one. I Saw the Light, uh, the story of Hank Williams with, uh, Tom Hiddleston and Elizabeth Olsen. I, I don't know. I thought I remember people saying this was a really good movie. And, uh, it's only 2.6 on Letterboxd, so I guess I was wrong. Let me know what you think of this one if you've seen it, uh. Oh, I like Tom Hiddleston a lot, and Elizabeth Olsen, so I'll definitely check that one out. This one, I'm not as surprised that it's low, but um, it's kind of one that's close to my heart, because it's a series of movies that I watched with my father um, growing up. So, uh, it may not be politically correct, and, uh, well, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, but, you know, different time, different world, and I enjoyed watching it with my father. So, I picked it up, um, Road to Hong Kong, Bing Crosby, uh, Bob Hope, Joan Collins. Um, this is the final Road movie. There were seven. I thought there was less than that. Um. This one's 2.8 on Letterboxd. Um, 
kind of a wonky plot. Um, somehow they get shot into space by... Well, I can't even remember. <laughs> I started watching it the other night, but, uh, anyway, um, they get, they get shot into space somehow, somehow something happens and they get shot into space. I can't exactly remember how it went down, but, um, basically like a mistaken identity as a spy type thing or something. Um, but anyway, Road to Hong Kong, I'm a big fan of these movies, uh, I really like Bob Hope and Bing Crosby together. Bing Crosby. I say that kind of weird sometimes. Bing Crosby. I like them together a lot. Um, well, I just like Bing Crosby a lot. Um, in general, I think. Uh, like Holiday Inn and White Christmas. The biggest bundle of them all. Raquel Welch. Um, let's see who else is in here. Edward G. Robinson, Robert Wagner, I guess that's about it as far as people I recognize. Um, don't know much about this, but thought I'd pick it up because you know it's a Warner Archive archive. So, I don't know. Let me know. Have you seen this? What do you thought of it? And this is one that I wanted to see in theaters, and I just uh, didn't get around to it. Um, this stars Amanda Stenberg of, well, Rue of The Hunger Games, and uh, probably more recognizable as uh, the girl from The Hate You Give, uh, alongside, I think, Nick Robinson, who I believe was in Love, Simon. So anyway, I like both those movies a lot, The Hate You Give, well, Hunger Games too, but The Hate You Give and um, I Love Simon. I Love Simon. Love Simon. Uh, everything, Everything. This is one that I didn't get a chance to see in theaters and kind of wanted to see. Um, it is only 2.8 also on Letterboxd, uh, a buddy of mine gave, the, gave it the review of, uh, more like something, something, certainly not everything, so, I don't know, I definitely think I'll pop this one in and watch it, see what I think. Three point oh, getting into some better movies here, I guess. This is Hallmark Entertainment's A Christmas Carol, The Musical. And this has a cool cast. Um, Kelsey Grammer, Sco Scrooge, which that sounds good. Um, Jane Krakowski, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Jason Alexander, some other people. It seems interesting to me. Definitely be watching this uh, this coming Christmas. Coming at 3.3, without a clue. Michael Caine, Ben Kingsley. Um, the idea here is that Watson is actually the brains, and he hires an actor to play Sherlock, which... I mean, there's some issues in my head. Like, okay, so once there's a new Holmes, what do people think of that? Like, how does that work? Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not really wrapping my brain around how this thing works. But, sounds like an interesting idea. Has a decent rating. And I really like Ben Kingsley a lot. And, of course, you know, Michael Caine is good as well. Um, so, I'm interested. Definitely check this one out. Let me know if you've seen it, what you think of it. 3.6, The Desk Set. Catherine Hepburn, Spencer Tracy. Saw this at IU Cinema with my dad. Man, that's something I miss. IU Cinema. 
man. We're, I think we're turning the corner here. I cannot wait. Maybe late this year, maybe next year, to start going to see movies again and not having to worry so much. Um, you know, I, I just miss the movies. I really do. And, uh, you know, could I go right now? Sure, I could. But it's just wonky. I mean, just like, even if I wanted to and wasn't worried about it, which I am, um, it's just so weird with the releases and like they're being released on HBO too. And like, I don't know. It's just, it just kind of takes the fun out of it to me. Um, I don't know. I hope we get past this and we can go to movies again. Um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there about the desk set because this is an old movie that I'd see it somewhere like, I use cinema, and I miss that too. I miss seeing old movies at IU Cinema, so I'll be excited to get back to that as well. This is a fun movie, like I said, I saw it with my dad. Uh, it's basically about oh, some gals in an office uh, being worried that the new computer is going to put people out of jobs um it's like a research computer and it's supposed to be able to come up with things quickly um so anyway yeah that's an interesting movie um 1957 uh so i don't know seems sort of ahead of its time in terms of computers taking over jobs and stuff but i suppose I don't really know. Was that happening in 1957? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't really know there was computers back then, but... Maybe it was sci-fi to, to an extent. I really don't know. I, I need to look that up now. Like, what, were there computers in 1957? I suppose there were some sort of computers, maybe? Anyway, Sorry. I keep getting, I keep digressing here, sorry. Uh, three more, two more left after this one. Army of Darkness, Bruce Campbell, Sam Raimi. Never seen Evil Dead 2 or Army of Darkness, so I'm excited to pick this up. I think I can watch this without seeing Evil Dead 2. Uh, let me know in the comments if you think I should not do that, or uh, if that should be okay. 3.7, I don't know if I said that already, letterboxed, um, so we're getting up pretty, pretty high marks now, um, pretty wild story, uh, looks like he goes back in time somehow and has to, uh, save the Necronomicon or, or, or get it back to get back to the present or something, anyway, sounds cool. This was one that I was, I almost didn't get this one, and then I saw it, and I was like, oh man, I just heard about that movie the other day, and I can't even really remember what I heard, but, um, Spike Lee, Bamboozled, uh, this is up to 3.7 on Letterboxd, um, never really heard of this one until a couple weeks ago, excited to check it out, got Damon Wayans, Savion Glover, Jada Pinkett Smith, Tommy Davidson, and Michael Rappaport. Um, so I'm ex excited to check that one out. And this one, surprisingly, was the highest rated, and I had never heard of this. Um, I was like, wow, the, why have I never heard of this River, Fe River Phoenix movie? Um, it's called Do Dogfight, a love story with uh, Lily Taylor, and it's 3.8 on Letterboxd, um, directed by Nancy Savoca, uh, let me go ahead and read it to you just in case you haven't heard it either, uh, it says the Marines have landed, Corporal Eddie Birdlace and three buddies are on the loose among San Francisco's bars, tattoo parlors, and blue, a moot. Blue movie houses. Um, I don't really know what that means. 
San Francisco's bars, tattoo parlors, and blue movie houses. I don't know. Um, they've also organized a dog fight, a wager with simple rules. Each guy puts in $50, and the one who finds the most unattractive date wins. Birdlace finds a rose. River Phoenix gave one of his most endearing performances as Eddie in Dogfight, a terrific and touching Vietnam-era saga set to a memory-evoking 60s tunes soundtrack and directed by Nancy Savoca of True Love and Household Saints. Lily Taylor is equally indelible as ugly duckling Rose, who joins Eddie in a night of life-transforming impact. In a time to be marked by huge changes, they share the most dynamic change of all, love. So, yeah, I mean, it sounds like kind of a mean movie to a certain degree, but um, obviously things must turn around and he must fall in love or something like that. I don't know. Um, let me know if you've seen this. I'd never heard of it. I was, I don't know, I was really surprised when I saw the rating because I thought it, since I hadn't heard of it, it was going to be low rated, but... Um, pretty high rated. I mean, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, I don't think this girl is ugly. Like, I don't, I don't really understand, but, um, no, whatever. I, I don't know. Uh, dog fight. Let me know if you've seen it, what you thought of it. Um, ooh, here's, I hadn't noticed this. Thumbs up. I really like this movie. And I greatly admired the performances by Lily Taylor and River Phoenix. I mean, that's pretty generic for Ebert, but I guess I guess he didn't choose what part of the quote was put on the box. So, um, yeah, dogfight. Let me know if you've seen it. I'm interested in this one. And thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I've got another haul coming up before too long, probably. Um, Jonathan from Platax2 sent me some stuff. So we will go through those next time, and I will catch you guys next time. Give me a thumbs up if you don't mind, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Later.